Good morning from Busch Gardens Williamsburg, park number 23 of our huge USA road trip. So we've got 10 coasters to be getting in at this park, including the brand new dark coaster, which we can't wait to get on. Intamin Straddle Coaster, it's indoors, it looks absolutely fantastic. Along with that, since I was last here in 2019, Pantheon's open, so I'm looking forward to that, and there's so many other awesome rides at this park. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh, park hours today are 10 a.m. through until 9. Weather's looking great at the moment, possibly storms later this evening, but you know what i'm just happy to be back here this is one of the most beautiful parks anywhere in the world and as you can see from the flags behind us you walk into an england themed entrance how cool is that that's it's really awesome. good we're actually parked on the england parking lot as well which is great so a nice welcome i would also just like to say thank you to thank bush you. gardens for providing us with our mission today and also allowing us to use the chest mounted gopro hey, they have a great system in place here where you can come to guest services they'll check the gopro and then they'll give you a little card um, so you can then go and film on the rides Oh, I absolutely love this entrance. All the buildings, the flags, the music. It is gorgeous here. And yeah, welcome to Busch Gardens Williamsburg here in Virginia, USA. What a welcome coming into this park. It's very heavily themed and the location is beautiful here. Oh, the entrance really is beautiful. It's all the music and the building style. Absolutely love it. And then you've got the clock tower just there in the middle as well, which is absolutely gorgeous. What a welcome. Here we go then. So we've made our way over to Pantheon to come and experience this first. Really excited to see how this is going to ride. It opened last year in 2022. Intamin LSM coaster. And yeah, very similar style ride to Dutatis that opened, of course, at Park Asterix in France earlier this year. And yeah, very excited to see how this ride. It's got a really nice theme sign down here at the entrance. So let's go and get on. If you're ready, put your hands up. <laughs> Great interaction from the Arps. And here we go. Pantheon, the world's fastest multi launch roller coaster. Really excited to see how this is going to ride. Let's go. Woo! Hey. The mini booster launch straight there into the inversion. Whoa. Let's go. Woo. Hey. Oh no, we've not made it. We're going backwards. Hey. Oh, good air time. time <laughs> oh, <laughs> what a stall Woo! oh there we go into the brake run that was fantastic i'd say that was better than i was expected actually really enjoyed that on the front row what a way to start the day well, we just had our first ever ride there on Pantheon. It's a coaster that was announced many years ago and I've been looking forward to experiencing. And you know what? It was fantastic, wasn't it, on the front I there? I really enjoyed that. The backwards airtime was crazy. I probably got chucked up into my seat. Yeah, you've got that little launch at the start. Nothing spectacular into the first inversion, which is a good way to kind of build you up ready for what you're about to experience. And then, of course, you've got the launch forwards, backwards, and then forwards again, uh, where you got the absolutely fantastic airtime. Uh, the spike itself wasn't great on the front. I think that'll be better at the back. And then over the top, Pat, uh, which was great looking out at all the views following on from that of course lots of twists and great transitions top speed of 73 miles an hour and yeah it was a really good fun ride i think it rode better than i was expecting yeah that. it rode really well it just kept its pace throughout the entire layout yeah it was great really quite intense in some areas as well of course a lot of people have wondered what's it like compared to tutatis that opened at park asterix i'd say for me tutatis is better the launch feels more airtime on there i completely agree i think with this one it just needs a little bit more theming in the ride here because it's a bit barren yeah yeah, some more theming like that was on the original plans or um, some more landscaping, some trees and things around there as well. But so it certainly doesn't look as barren as it did when it opened last year. Um, it was literally built on soil, but yeah, there's a bit of grass there. But yeah, I could do with a bit more around it, but still great fun ride, better than I was expecting. And they're probably the best coaster trains in the business so from Intamin now. Like, they are fantastic just with a lap bar restraint. Uh, doesn't get too tight, really comfortable. Now I enjoyed Pantheon a lot. 
And up next, we're making our way onto Apollo's chariot. This was the OG, the original BM hyper coaster that opened here in 1999. And you know what? For an older ride, it's still got a great layout. I really enjoyed this last time. So let's go and get on. And here we are, climbing up the lift hill on Apollo's chariot. I do love the zero car on this. Feels very premium down there. Look at that. Lots of detailing. Not just a sticker on the front or just the name. Yeah, it's full on. And yeah, this park's a beautiful location, hence why it's won so many awards over the years for most beautiful park. When you're on the rise, like you're just looking at all the trees, and yeah, it's really nice. That's why really Pantheon needs a bit more landscaping around it, just to fit in with the rest of the park. And as you can see, the parking lot is very quiet. Like, I've walked on both rides so far. It doesn't seem very busy with people coming in at all. So yeah, climbing up, I'm going to drop down 210 feet on the original B&M Hyper Coaster. And it's a good ride. I love the track colour for this. Get that little V&M pre-drop that you don't really get now on hypers. <laughs> and there we go, from road. Woo! Woo! A little bit of floater. Oh, look at that. track color is gorgeous oh <laughs> yellow and purple i love it Woo. back over the water there's the rapids <laughs> hey and up into the final drop this is a good one hey oh love that there you go. Oh, what a great coaster. It's not got loads of airtime or anything, but you know what? It's got a nice layout for the original too. I'll let it off. From right there on Apollo's Chariot, and I love the location for that ride, and that's what makes it really special, doesn't it? Oh, like going over the water is fantastic. Yeah, you pass over a couple of times, and it's great, and especially that drop down towards the river. I think that's absolutely beautiful. It really is, and that's the turnaround section for making your way, of course, back through the various different camel humps that they've got on there. Uh, but you know what? It's a fantastic ride. It's not really got loads of airtime, especially down at the front. A little bit of floater, and that's about all. It's better near the back. However, I thought we'll go on at the front to show you the POV on we'll there. We'll get a back row ride later. Like yeah, definitely make the most of it. But yeah, it's a nice ride. Of course, hyper coasters have come a long way um, since the original just there. Uh, but it all has to start somewhere. It's smooth, it's enjoyable, and it's in a beautiful location. I love this park, so it's so nice to be back here again for what's only my second ever visit, and of course, Charlotte's first time. Look at all this here. The music, the theming, the planting, the lovely fountain over there too. Gorgeous park this is, really nice here. It's got a lot of shade too. <laughs> so I was going for a bit of opera. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Look at all these buildings down here. It's so pretty. So we just crossed over the river, and yeah, they're doing some refurbishment work on the bridge at the moment, so it's blocked quite a lot. Uh, hopefully it's done soon. Yeah, fingers crossed. I mean, you normally get a cracking view from on there. And um, we have made our way up here into Oktoberfest, Germany. Hey, I love it around here. All the music and the theming at this park is fantastic. Some of the best we've seen all trip. They actually used to have a drop tower here called the Mac Tower. It was absolutely terrible. So I'm really pleased that they took it out. It was one of the worst drop towers I've ever done. Really uncomfortable as well. Used to stand right there. Now now it's a seating area. Um, yeah, hopefully they'll put a replacement drop tower in that's actually worth it. Um, because yeah, that one wasn't very good. Hey, hey Charlotte, getting into the uh, big fan there. That is what you need today. Look at that. Perfect. And she's gone. <laughs> right, we're up next we're going on the Bolton just over here. Really looking forward to getting back on this coaster. Someone's crashed the car out the front though by the looks of it. <laughs> Let's go and give it a go. And here's a look at the station for the Bolton. I've not said that much about this yet because of course I want it to be a bit of a surprise for Charlotte this one. So we'll talk more in detail about the ride when we come off. But yeah, it's very well themed here in the station. And look at the cars just there. Awesome. Yeah. 
Oh, look at the awesome trains on here. It's like we're going into a limousine, Ooh. Charlotte. Oh, I love that. We're on the yellow one. Hey, yellow train coming in just here for our ride. On the Bolton. <laughs> Let's ride. And here we go, wait in about 10 minutes. I love the interaction there in the station. Let's go. For, for a journey around the Black Forest. Dropping down towards the water. Wow. <laughs> oh, and that's the bowling just there. How is that for you? That was so much fun. <laughs> I don't know if you saw it on the camera much, but yeah, there is a vertical drop track in there. We'll talk more about it when we come up. All right, footage there from the Bolton, built by Zira and opened here at the park in 2012. And that is a fantastic family coaster, isn't it? Oh, that was absolutely brilliant. The train design on there was so good, and the indoor section took me by surprise with the drop track. Yeah, and the rest of the indoor section is fantastic too. You've got some good drops and turns, which is very forceful actually. More forceful than you'd expect from a family coaster. And of course, the drop track itself. A lot of people don't know it's coming. It's very dark in there. And obviously, you couldn't really see that very well on the GoPro footage. But in person, it's very atmospheric in there, it isn't is. it? It is. It's literally pitch black yeah and you drop down 18 feet of course then launch forwards and then yeah you've got the other outdoor sections with a great drop too uh, towards the river brilliant ride that is i do feel like intamin do the drop track better than zira but this is fantastic there wasn't much force on there was there no no i mean it feels good when you're on it but it just doesn't feel like it lasts for that long does no, it no it just comes down really fast but uh, there you go i did enjoy uh, getting back on that it's a good family coast and yeah the theming's really nice on there too well, we're really hungry this morning, so we're going to try and get a bit of food now. I know it's early on, but yeah, it's 20 past 11. We're going to see if we can get some food here. And the fest horse that they've got, this is a really nice building over here, and they have a lot of entertainment in here going on too. Only it's open for food, which is good, because we're very hungry. But yeah, it's very nice in here. Look at this, all the theming, the big stage. And yeah, if we get a chance later, or if the storm comes in, we'll come and check out the entertainment. What you got there? I've got some mozzarella sticks and some fries and water. And how much was that? It's like $17. <laughs> yeah, that's, the water's free as well. Yeah, I, know. I can't believe it. And I've gone for the pizza just here, cheese pizza, and also the cheesecake. This was $25, and worth pointing out, there's a 5% surcharge just added on now at the SeaWorld and Busch Gardens parks. Um, so that adds an extra $1.10, um, yeah, for no reason at all. I don't know if it's like an automatic tip or not, but yeah, I did read about that online. So I tell you what, I cannot wait for some UK park food again. I never oh, thought man. I'd say it, but 20 pounds for oh, that, that meal. That uh, and that's without the fizzy drink, oh, like, whew, oh, very, very expensive at these parks for food. Oh, I did enjoy my food there, even though it was quite expensive. We also found out about the 5% surcharge. It's for increased operational costs, it says on the bottom of the receipts. I wish they'd just put the items up individually though, really, instead of doing that. But uh, still, it was nice. Anyway, going to make my way on to Dark Coaster now. Is you, Charlotte? Ready? Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. First time ride for the both of us on this one? I love one. an indoor coaster. I can't wait for this one. Yeah, it's an intimate family launch coaster. known as a straddle coaster. And with this one, we're actually going to be sitting on snowmobiles. Um, see, I'm looking forward to seeing how this is going to ride. Well, some great theming throughout the queue line, lots to look at, which is fantastic. Yeah, here's the train design, so the snowmobiles just here, of course, we've queued up throughout Do the castle itself. Do you have itself. the text to brave the storm? <laughs> Let's find out. I'm heading outside into the storm. Straddle coaster. You can see the storm and all the frost over on the window there. Very cool effect. You've escaped. 
Let's see how this rides. It actually features two launches on the layout. However, it goes round part of the layout twice, which is very interesting because round the back of this wall, there's a switch track, and we're going to bypass the station, do a second lap, meaning that we're going to be launched four times on this. Very clever design. Let's go and see how it rides. I don't think we're going to see much on the POV, but we'll take you along anyway. Do you have what it takes to brave the storm? I guess we're going to find out. Let's find out. Let's go. Absolutely fantastic. That really took me out of surprise, actually. Wow, that was really good. Well, we just did our first ever ride there on Dark Coaster, Nuva 2023 here at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. And that ride has been getting some very mixed reviews. However, we absolutely loved that, didn't we? That was absolutely brilliant. I enjoyed that so much. Like the train design was fantastic. In the building, it was so cold, so it really set the scene. It really did, and that's the thing. Obviously, they had the air conditioning blasting out in there. But what made it for me was in the station area, it was still pretty warm. And as soon as we did that launch into the cold it building, cold. it just really added to the feel of that ride didn't it which was brilliant and then let's talk about the actual track itself so like I say you go round twice however you don't come through the station again it's got that transfer track that kind of bypass built behind the station wall you can tell when you go around for a second lap however you get four launches on there top speed of 36 miles an hour and I just thought the ride itself take away the theming for a minute the ride itself had a lot more going for it than I was expecting it was so snappy on some of the turns I loved it it really was and the launches were great on there uh, when we had did the first lap round I thought this is great I'm glad we're going again you know we had that other lap round on there meaning so two physical launches in place but four actual launches because you go around twice uh, but it was great fun and yeah I really enjoyed that really whippy uh, and it's fantastic and it's freezing cold which really added to it and then the theming and effects in there I would have liked them to have been a bit more however there certainly was quite a lot to see you had the big kind of lightning strikes there was also some kind of monster there yeah it was like this big skeleton thing that like lit up purple that was really cool yeah I enjoyed that uh, and some clouds as well that were lit up, some projections in there, and of course this huge monster as well. Great fun coaster. Uh, loads of people were going on there and really enjoying it. And yeah, I think that's a great addition to this park. An indoor ride um, is what they really needed here, and I'm really pleased they've got that. Obviously, back in the day, that used to be a dark castle, which was a dark ride. I never got to experience it myself. However, I'm so glad that they've got something more permanent in there now again, because uh, that dark ride closed many years ago. The building was sat empty for quite some time, and they've got an indoor coaster, which is fantastic it now we love dark coats oh, are there absolutely yeah it. brilliant family ride that is oh this park is absolutely beautiful it's so nice to be back here and come and see it all look at the building style around here beautiful planting all the flowers it is so nice and just over there there's a ride bargain going on yeah literally 50 cents oh, how good is that that's amazing that is oh look at this gorgeous I love just walking around all these little streets, seeing all the buildings. It's the closest experience you'll get to like a European theme park coming here to Busch Gardens Williamsburg. And of course that is because of the theming and the themed areas on this journey round, which is fantastic. As we make our way towards another fantastic coaster just here, Alpengeist, the 1997 B&M inverted coaster. And what's really cool about this, look at the custom supports there from B&M, designed to look like a ski lift. How amazing is that? 
Look at the size of this monster of a coaster, Alpengeist. It's actually got a 195 foot tall lift hill and it is massive. Look at this. Big scale BM coaster. Very excited to ride. Let's go and get on. Up this way to the entrance, ski lodge, down this way, clear weather. Oh, look at all the snow as well. Theming's fantastic. Yeah, just sort of mention about the locker system as well. Paid lockers here, very similar, of course, to Busch Gardens Tampa and also SeaWorld over in Florida. It's $10 all day for a movable locker. However, you can take small bags and items up onto the station. So we're gonna take you on for a front row ride on Alpine Guys. Look at the skis on the back of the seats. How awesome is that? Theme is amazing here. Anyway, in about 10 minutes there for a front row ride. More than worth it to get a front row on here, especially with the size of this beast. You get from here, you really get to appreciate how they made it look like a ski lift with the support structure. Literally all just for the theme. Oh, look at that there, very unique. And we've still got some fantastic rides coming up. The classic Loch Ness Monster. And also Griffin. Almost 200 foot up here. It's a massive invert this. Wow, look at the view. And there we go. Massive drop. fantastic coaster Woo! that was incredible i love alpen guys one of the best bnm coaches in the world in my opinion and here's charlotte making the most of it just down here <laughs> after experiencing six inversions and a top speed of 67 miles an hour that was absolutely fantastic i think that might be my favorite invert oh there you go it was brilliant it just kept on giving it was so tall as well fantastic the size of the inversions on there yeah, as know, well it was so big that was brilliant the whole theme of it and if I come back over here, you'll see Charlotte a bit more. There you go. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Yeah, all the effort they went into with the theme. In. Bye, Charlotte. I'll leave you there. <laughs> yeah, with these supports, absolutely brilliant. Yeah, that is a brilliant ride. It really is. Fantastic to get back on there. Hey, I'm going to show you the part of map in just a second, but here you go, Charlotte. You've got a beer. So I've got my 50 cents beer, but I did have to pay the 5% surcharge, <laughs> so it was 59 cents. You're allowed two of these. I got a little bingo dabber on me. Oh, I would say you just have two you per day. Two. How good's that? that? I mean, you can't complain at that. No, you oh, that's great, that is. Mm. Cheers. What have you gone for there? Bloodline, that's all they do. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, here's a look at the full park map. You can see how it's a huge park. It really is. And all the different themed areas France up there, Ireland, England, Scotland, Italy, Germany, Oktoberfest and Festa Italia down there at the bottom. Yeah, I love this park so much. It's great to be back here. And we've got another huge BNM to get on now. Griffin, the dive machine just here. And you probably saw it whilst we was there on Alpen, guys. They've also got a flume ride down here. They've got a train, they've got a cable car. There's so many awesome rides at this park. Obviously, we're prioritizing the bigger coasters first because we think this storm is going to be coming in later on. So we want to make sure we get those in. And then, of course, we'll head around on some of the other rides. But yeah, look at this park. Gorgeous steaming, and it's all the trees and landscaping that really make it. And over in the back there, you can see Invader, and we'll get on there shortly too. And here we are in the French themed area, ready for a ride on Griffin just here. 2007 BM dive coaster. 
Look at that, it's been repainted since last time I was here as well. I've got to say, Bush Gardens and SeaWorld Parks are great at looking after the parks and repainting the rides. Like they're always at it, which is fantastic to see. Let's make our way down here. It's the entrance for Griffin. But yeah, I do love how they've got like all the little buildings around the park. Just the whole place is really nicely presented. It's really nice, this park. I loved it last time in 2019, and it's great to be back here. And of course, the fact we can film on ride, even better. Really Good bonus. interactions. <laughs> there we go, there's a big beastly track on this one. Massive trains, three rows of 10, 30 riders per train. the water look at that you don't realize how close you are to the water when you're in this park because of all the trees but yeah look at it out there stunning and here we go wow. ready the ultimate hang time oh love the hold you're here for ages and here we go Here we go again! Good fun, I do love the repaint that's on there. Looking really fresh. Griffin. Front row ride there on Griffin, and it was good to give that coaster another go, because I remember being here last time and saying that it was a good ride, but nothing fantastic dive coaster wise. I did enjoy it more this time. It's still not one of my favorites out there, but it is a big ride, isn't it? Yeah, I think that was absolutely brilliant. It's not as intense as some of the others though. Yeah, Shikra at Busch Gardens Tampa is much better in my opinion. Uh, that's probably my favorite ever dive coaster. However, what I do like with this is the view, of course, at the top. Along with that as well, you've got the huge 205 foot first drop. You then got a second 130 foot drop as well. And of course, two inversions, both of which are Immelman's on there. Oh uh, yeah, great ride. The water splash is good as well. Oh, behind it us. you down a little bit. Yeah, it does. Let's take a closer look at it. And here it comes. Oh, wow. <laughs> How cool is that? I do love the water splashes, especially ones that are caused by the train. I think it's fantastic. You've got the two metal bell parts on the back of the train, and literally they just come into the water here and create that splash effect, which looks really cool. Yeah, same as what they've got on Shikra. Yeah, great ride. It's been really well looked after, painted up as well. Yeah, enjoy getting back on it. Views are fantastic. It's a good dive machine. And as I mentioned before riding, this is actually the French themed area. Yeah, these buildings, beautiful around here. There's so many different little shops to walk around and food available around here too. Yeah, it's just got a really quaint feel about it, which I do like. Like, just how you can kind of get lost in these areas and walk around and take it all in. You know, I really enjoy that in a park. All the lovely planting too. All the music, just so nice walking around this park. It's one of those where you don't have to ride anything. You can just come here, have a chill out. Or if you don't like big coasters, you can still come here, have a walk around, appreciate it all. That's what I really like about a park. Nice uh, car just down there too. Here in France. Well, we were just getting past the Skyride station down here and thought, you know what, let's jump on it so we can get some nice scenic views. And look at this. Yeah, it actually operates as a big triangle, I believe. It's great that they've got this transportation around the park. And look at this, right by Griffin. Oh. You get to see all the ride just here. And all across this themed area. Of course, we head over towards Alpengeist over here too. How nice is this, Charlotte? This is so nice. 
gorgeous. Oh, it's great. Finnegan's fly just over there. You gonna check that out later? Hey! Oh, I love that. There's Loch Ness Monster coming to be over there. Absolute classic. You're looking forward to that? That is just so iconic, isn't it? Loch Ness Monster. It is old school ride, but you know why? It's brilliant. I really like it. How tall that inversion is. Yeah, the loop is massive just there. You get to appreciate the height of the lift there on Alpengeist. I love how close you get. Like, imagine being right here now and the train's coming round. Literally within feet of the rider's feet. <laughs> what a location for a park, it's gorgeous. It's worth pointing out, you do actually need to get off at each station, even if you do want to stay on. But yeah, not a problem when there's no queue like this. Obviously, if it is busier, then yeah, you will have to wait in between each time. And we're back on, after a couple of minutes there in the station. And here's your iconic view, look at this. Of Loch Ness Monster. Oh, perfect timing, here we go. Arrow looping coaster. That ride has just been featured in so many pictures and videos over the years, and yeah, just seeing it in person, quite an experience. Of course, Griffin there behind it, and Alpengeist. Wow, it's one of them rides, you just see so many pictures of them interlocking loops there. Amazing. It's nice to be able to do all of these different sky rides, because last time I was here, I think I only got on one because of how busy it was. So yeah, it's great to get them all in. Yeah, it is really quiet. I love, I love how close you just get to all the tracks as well. Like, a lot of these are built away from rides normally, but yeah, on this one, you're literally going right over close to inversions and everything, which is fantastic. Now this Skyride system was actually built by Von Roll. And yeah, we're making our way into this station, which is by the entrance, England. I can see the flags just over there. Only a few days to go until we return to England. After a month, I can't believe it. Yeah, we may as well go and do the final one just there now. And here we are then, on the third and final one. All the kites just there. Yeah, nice to get all three in. So yeah, we were hoping to get a green one because we, there's three different colors, isn't there? the full set then. <laughs> oh, no, we've done a blue before. And the yellow. Sheep. Yeah, we've got some animals down here. Don't know if there's any goats here or not, Charlotte. I don't know. I'm not too sure. Look sheep. I look down towards Island there. More cute buildings. And here's Finnegan's Flyer. Yeah, we'll head down there and check that out. Look at that area from above. Gorgeous. And I'll tell you what, Griffin looks spectacular from this side too. Also see you've got the train track down there. Hopefully we'll get a ride in on the train too. And of course you've got some great water rides here as well. Fingers crossed we'll get to experience those this afternoon. It all depends on if that storm's gonna come in. It's same 50% chance of storms, lightning in about two hours time. So we'll see what happens. Well, it was really nice to do the full triangle loop there over on the sky ride with some fantastic views. I love how close you get to lots of the rides on there too. Yeah, it was brilliant that was. Made for some really good footage. And up next, we're making our way over here to Invader, which is a 2017 GCI roller coaster. And yeah, fun fact for you, it runs Millennium Flyer trains. The old trains that used to run on Guazi at Busch Gardens Tampa in Florida now run on this here after a full refurb. It's got a great entrance, it says as well down here. Yeah, let's go and give this a go. Look at this, what a structure. And we got a dispatch here on the front row of Invader. Nice little pre-lift drop. Cheesy eye special. And yeah, the design of this is actually a hybrid. We just got a steel support structure and then the wooden track on here. Some nice interaction with the flume ride there. Hello! <laughs> There's a train just down there too. It might not look very sunny today, but blimey, I mean, it's humid. All that could change <laughs> later on. We might get rained off, but we'll see. Here we go. Hey. Drop in the tunnel, love it. Woo!
Vader on the front row. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of that. It doesn't really do that much for me, I'll be honest. But it is more of a smaller family GCI. Well, we waited about 10 minutes there for our ride on Invader. And yeah, do you like the first drop out of the tunnel there? Yeah, I loved going through the tunnel. It reminded me of Wicker Man so much. Yeah, I mean, with that ride, it's a smaller GCI, more for the families, that one. And yeah, it's what it is, a family coaster. Nothing spectacular, in my opinion. It rattled quite a bit, I yeah, thought. Yeah, it does. It didn't really do a lot. No, but uh, yeah, it's good fun for what it is. It fits in that area of the park nicely as well. And just add some more family stuff here at this park, which is certainly need as well. Um, because you've got to think they've got a lot of big, thrilling rides here. Needs that perfect mix of something here for everyone and that's what they do really well i think these past few years with some of the newer family additions especially like dark coaster they've really filled that gap in what they had here at this park which is great to see what we got going on down here charlotte so that's a snapping turtle that is look at the size of that he's coming over to say hello he'll bite oh, here he is yeah we got all the little ones down here too the terrapin hey <laughs> and a pretty iconic view coming up just over here look at this Loch Ness Monster. Wow, this coaster opened here in 1978. Two loops interlocking just there, which looked awesome. And yeah, I remember seeing photos of this when I was a kid and always wanted to come here to Busch Gardens Williamsburg to come and ride this and just see it from off ride. I mean, look at this. It's an absolute beast of a ride. And yeah, it just fits the landscape beautifully coming out of the trees on either side just there. Of course, the two inversions. Yeah, built by Aerodynamics, one of my favorite old school manufacturers that unfortunately are no longer with us. Yeah, this is brilliant down here on this pathway. It's a must coming down here and getting them awesome views. Cobra roll there too on Alpengeist. Iconic down here and yeah, here's a look at the plaque for Loch Ness Coaster as it says just on here too And yeah, 1978 is the world's tallest roller coaster staying at a height of 130 feet Amazing how time's moved on, but this is still a classic ride and also as well the fact that you've got the interlocking loops just there And here's the entrance of the coaster. We've spoke about it a lot. We've shown you it off ride. Now it's time for the POV of the Loch Ness Monster. Let's go and ride. Here we go, we got a dispatch on the legendary Loch Ness Monster. Oh, I love this. I'm so pleased that it's still operating and going strong. Loch Ness. Hey, looking forward to this? Yeah. It's probably the most famous coaster at the park. It has been for a very long time. Just with how iconic it is with that two interlocking loops. And it's well worth taking the time out to stroll down that path and have a look. You've also got the Rhine River Cruise down there too. Hopefully we'll get time for that later. This is our last major coaster to get in because Tempesto is actually closed at the moment. Yeah, I think it was closed for a few days. So I don't think we're going to get on that. But it's only a Premier Ride Skyrocket, so it's not the end of the world. Out of all the big coasts to be sure, that's the one that I you know, don't mind so much. Would have still done it, and it's a good fun ride, but yeah, you can see it actually over there in the distance. There it is, off to the left. Let's ride the Loch Ness Monster. Hey! Massive drop. Takes you by surprise a bit, this one. Woo! Hey! Whoa! A good old school, not much arrow banking, I love it. <laughs> These are the first of them two loops. Time for a round 
number two. Are you ready, Charlotte? <laughs> Oh yeah, there is. Here's the loop. Whoa. Whoa. They're so close to the other track. Whoa. There you go. What an icon since 1978. On right footage from the front row of the legend itself, Loch Ness Monster. How was it? It was like slapping me from side to side, which is quite funny, but I loved the indoor section with the helix in there. Yeah, that's great. And yeah, I love the two interlocking loops on there. So iconic. Seen so many pictures of that over the years. I used to come and ride it again. Uh, it's a brilliant ride, it really is. Of course, it's not the smoothest. It's an old arrow coaster. Uh, some of the transitions on there are a bit like this. Uh, but you know what? It's not really rough, uh, and it's still had a very enjoyable experience. I loved it on the front as well. You get to really appreciate the stunning location and all the beautiful scenery we yeah, like I say Tempesto's closed at the moment I don't think that's going to be opening today unfortunately however um, we've got the other major coasters in which we have is good. which I'm really pleased about definitely and you've got lots of other cute little buildings around here in the Scotland themed area of the park right you know what I really fancy a water ride now with how hot it is the humidity today Charlotte the sweat is dripping off of it. yeah it really is I think we'll head around this way as you go and escape from Pompeii and here's the sign for Escape from Pompeii. Didn't actually get to experience this last time because I think it closed due to technical issues. And yeah, apparently it's got some fire effects and other special effects to enjoy in the building. So we're doing a water ride together here for the first time. No, we're doing it. You coming on though? Yeah, well, come on, I just don't want to be near the front. Yeah, this heat today, like, oh, so I need a cool down. Like, I want to get absolutely soaked on here. Um, so yeah, let's just go and give this a ride. It looks like they've either painted up the drop or replaced some of it, because it looks very fresh. Yeah, let's go and give this a go. And here we go then, climbing up the lift hill. <laughs> oh, there's your fate down there, Charlotte. Oh, no, I'll try not to look at it. Are you ready to escape from Pompeii? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, some fire in here, apparently. Nice, Stephen. Look at this. Yeah, I missed out on this last time. Oh. Look at all the scenery. Oh, it's a shame there was no fire in there. No. Yeah, I can't fully watch from what people have said in the past, but in yeah, some good bits of theming in there, though. Yeah. Well, oh, that's a shame. We got a nice sprinkle there. Well, we just did our ride there on Escape from Pompeii. Yeah, brilliant facade, as you can see just here out the front. And yeah, unfortunately, that fire effect wasn't working inside, which I'd imagine is the big highlight, really, in there, just before you drop down. However, there was some good theming, some nice props in there. Pretty immersive. Yeah, shame we didn't get that main effect there, wasn't it, really? No, we were waiting for it, and it just never happened. Yeah, shame that one, but... The doors just opened and we were down. Yeah, <laughs> we didn't get that wet, though, did we? No, Oh, it's because we sat on the back, that's why. I know, that's where the place to be. <laughs> no, it's good to go on there, I enjoyed it. Now, Bush Gardens Williamsburg has also got a fantastic variety of flat rides located throughout the park as well. Definitely want to get on Finnegan Flyer later, which is the SNS swing down the other side. Well, yeah, you've got a swinging ship just up here. And yeah, there's like a balloon ride down there. And yeah, lots of other fantastic flats throughout the park, which really is great. Nice variety here. Yeah, we've got the train just underneath there too. Try and get that in. Just seems to be blowing up a little bit. Feels like a storm could come in this afternoon. It is 
supposed to, but we will literally see what happens. Fancy another ride on Pantheon soon down here as well, because these intermin coasters normally do warm up a lot throughout the day. And yeah, we've got Tempesto down here that is close today, unfortunately, but we'll show you that just around the corner. And there it is, yeah, the Premier Ride Skyrocket 2. Not too disappointed that it's closed. I mean, of course, we'd have gone on it. Um, but yeah, it's just a very generic ride. Obviously, quite a few of these around. We've both done a few of these. And Charlotte's not a massive fan of these anyway, are you? I just find them so uncomfortable. I'm really not a fan. No, no, so it's not a great loss that this is closed here today, Tempesto. But there is another water ride just around this way. And that's the Roman Rapids. We did that. And here we go then on the Roman Rapids. We've got a full <laughs> <laughs> Hey, we've got plenty of us in here. It's a grim. Gonna be I'll laugh this one, Charlotte. Oh, we're going some speed already. Hey! <laughs> it's why we wanted to cool down. We thought we got to bring you on, especially with it being a rapids we can actually film on this trip. There we go. Hey! <laughs> I don't know if the water falls oh. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Is it coming in behind? Are you getting our back? Oh! That's a wet bag. <laughs> Woo! I can't see anything, we're going backwards. Uh, no. <laughs> Roman Rapids. This is what we wanted though, it's a good day for it, this humidity today. <laughs> good views of Apollo's chariot from on here as well. Fantastic. I've got a very wet back. <laughs> oh no. Look at this. Hey. Woo! Oh. <laughs> hey. oh, no. oh, look at this. Oh, we're getting it now. We're getting it. Oh, no, we're not. Maybe. Oh. 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 <laughs> hey. Look at these waves. Oh. Woo. Oh. I'm trying to put my swim shorts on now. Hey. Oh, no. This is us. Oh, oh we did all right there. Did all right. What I've <laughs> only got some light sprinkles down here, I think, Charlotte. Oh, oh, light sprinkles. No. Oh. oh, look at them views. Fantastic. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. That could have been us, Charlotte. It could have been us. What is going on down here, please? Just, just, just some sprinkles. Oh, it's nice clean water, though, which is good. Oh, no. Filtered water. <laughs> what we got going on down here? Oh! Hey! Right. This wasn't all that oh. <laughs> That's cooled us down nice, that was. Oh. Oh, yeah, that's it, right towards the end. That wasn't too bad, that was it? Oh, but that was nice, that. We'll be drying about 10 minutes. <laughs> Roman Rapids. <laughs> well, we just had our ride there on the Roman Rapids. There they come. Hey, that seems to be a point where it gets people a big wave there. <laughs> Some good effects towards the end on there. And yeah, good intermin Rapids. Enjoyed it. But we're going to take you on, especially because we can actually film a POV on this one. Oh, but absolutely so. I don't like when the big water fountain came over. Oh, you're all right so though. Has it cooled you down a bit? Yeah, but I'm so. Oh, it's only a little bit, that. Yeah. Well, yeah, definitely. It was good. Well, we we're just about to have another ride on Pantheon, but then we heard the train coming into the platform and thought, you know what? Let's have a loop round on here because you get some fantastic views. And of course, we can get back up here and do Pantheon again. Now, it should have warmed up a bit. And straight away, you get some fantastic views looking at Pantheon. Yeah, you get to see a little bit more how barren it is under the coaster, but there is some planting there, so hopefully they can add a bit more landscaping. I remember seeing POVs of it when it opened, it was just mud all underneath, so at least the grass has started to grow. Yeah, there's a lot of planting over there, so it's one of those that will get better over time. Make our way over the river. What a location. And yeah, that outward banked airtime hill. Perfect there. Right next to the water. Oh, look at the deers. Oh, 
Griffin there, it's a monster is there, look at that. As we approach Tweedside Station, please listen to the following safety announcements. Please remain seated until the train has come to a full and complete stop. You may then exit to your left and left hand side only. Like you can really see why it's won so many awards for most beautiful park over the years because it's right up there, it's one of my favourites. Oh, I do love our steam trains, we've been doing quite a few this trip, and yeah, it's definitely one of the best, especially when you pass over the bridge looking at all the coasters. You enjoy that? We even saw some deers along the way, which is really nice. Yeah, I don't know if they were like in just a, an actual area or not. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember seeing deers on there before. Yeah, it was. Right, we're going to have another re-ride now on Pantheon. We'll get down at the back. We'll take you on for another POV further back on the train. You know, let's see if she's warmed up a bit. Yeah, there is a little bit more theming down here at the entrance of this ride. Five minute wait for Pantheon this afternoon. Fantastic. And yeah, there's a few more bits of theming down here in the queue line. Love the trains. Remember seeing them for the reveal, actually, at Iapa. And yeah, some more views looking out over the coaster itself. Just over to the left. Yeah, I remember on the original plans, there was going to be some more head choppers, kind of near-miss elements around. Yeah, that never happened, unfortunately. Maybe because of the cutbacks after the pandemic. Literally walked straight on. And we've gone for the second row from the back, just so we can see a bit more on the GoPro. We haven't got a seat directly in front of us. A little bit more of a gap. Let's see how it is now. Yay! Woo! I love the sound of them into my item launches. Like, <laughs> made it over the top hat. <laughs> roll back. You gotta roll back every time. Hey, time. Whoa. Woo. Oh, what a view. Yeah. Not the spike. Yeah. Woo. Hey. Woo. Great airtime there. Oh, he goes so slow over the top hat. definitely warmed up from earlier on definitely, that was running faster yeah either that or it's better down near the back yeah probably the latter helps as well but yeah that was really good enjoyed that a lot on right footage there from towards the back of the train on pantheon and i tell you what that warms up so much and it's so much better near the back and it's it's charlotte so much. <laughs> hang on your hair's changed color charlotte I know it has <laughs> that's a really good photo of that is down there Oh, Charlotte's changed back now. I'm back. <laughs> but yeah, also along with that, the spike, of course, is always going to be better on the back because you go further up it. Uh, I still think Titartis is the better coaster out of the two, obviously with them being both quite comparable. However, this is a very good ride and it rides better than I was expecting. It now. is so fast on some of those transitions. It's so whippy. Yeah, it's great. I just wish you went a little bit faster over the top hat on both Titartis and this, to be Isn't honest. It, slow? it is, yeah. We wanted more kind of velocity coaster style and um, whizzing over the top hat, getting crazy to air time coming down uh, but no, it's a great ride here at this park a uh, really nice addition and yeah it's been good to get a couple of rides on there hopefully we'll get another one later we'll prioritize getting some other re-rides in uh, we're going to do apollo's chariot again the hyper and yeah just go around and do some more bits uh, we've got the log flume over the other side show you some of the other flat rides they've got here and yeah just keep on riding into the evening here down here by the river and we're actually going on the rhine river cruise just here now you can see it pulling in and yeah you can just see behind it there that bridge the rewards cross earlier on and yeah normally you wouldn't have kind of had all the scaffolding on there however i imagine they're doing some work on there at the moment some restoration so yeah hopefully that'll be back open so you can see the views again in the future the good thing is we're going to get some awesome views from here on the river cruise and here we are then on the boats yeah we've got little tables on here too which is great and here's an awesome view looking out of the bolton just there 
that's what I do love about this park. They really do use the location to its advantage. I mean, look at that. Coming down the drop and looking down the river here. Stunning. Would have been perfect timing for a train to come then. <laughs> well, I think we just missed it. Oh, and this view's changed a little bit since last time I was on this boat. Look at the view of Pantheon just there. The outward banked airtime hill. And there's the top hat on Pantheon as well. And yeah, again, designed beautifully. So you drop down out of the top hat into this corner, looking down at the river. And the fantastic view of the stall there too. Beautiful and peaceful down here. And then just in the distance, you can just hear the roar of the coasters. And yeah, the steam train that we went on earlier actually passes over that trestle bridge there. Oh, and as we make our way further down the river here, an awesome view of one of the airtime hills on Apollo's chariot just there. It's popping out from the trees. Oh, and there's another view of Apollo's chariot just there. Yeah, that drop just before the turnaround section. And we've just turned around down the bottom of the river there, making our way back towards the dock. And this time, we've got the boat. Oh, a nice relaxing boat ride there. Did you enjoy that, Charlotte? Oh, I really enjoyed that. Yeah, lovely views from down there too. There's still three hours to go until park close, and it's really starting to filter out. Maybe people are too hot, or also, of course, this storm that was supposed to be really in by now, but yeah, it's not, which I'm really pleased about, because it's meaning we're getting loads of rides in. So we're going on Lisku Log Flume now. Oh, we're sitting in the back of the log boat. Does that mean Charlotte have done all three water rides here? Yes. I can't believe it. What a day. Yeah, let's get a ride on Lisku. And we've got a dispatch straight onto Lisku just here. Fantastic interaction with Alpen guys just there. Yeah, we had another re ride on there just too, which was fantastic. Oh yeah, really nicely padded. And here we go, just come off the lift hill. Hey, sun's going down. It doesn't look like a storm's gonna come into me, but we'll see what happens. Whoa! Oh, yeah, we've done a few re-rides as well, which has been great. Perfect day to be here. Hey, we got a member of staff up here. Hello! <laughs> That's better. Hey, goodbye. <laughs> that was funny. Hey. Let's scoop. Yeah, she was like, could you put your phone away? And then she's like, oh, I haven't got my glasses on. I can see it's a chest mounted GoPro now. <laughs> that was funny. Some views of Invader around here too. Charlotte is on here, she's behind me. I have definitely come on, I'm here. <laughs> Make our way around to the big drop. It's only a shorter ride this one, but you know what? They've got some fantastic stuff here. One of my favorite parks of the trip. Look at this massive hammer coming in, big axe. Look at that. That's what's going to happen, Charlotte, if you don't go on any water rides. <laughs> Here we go. Hello. Hey, have a nice evening. There we go. Three members of staff are there. Woo! Oh, let's go. Oh, that was good. I'm greeted with helping guys. Fantastic. <laughs> we got a little mini drop now, Charlotte. Here we go. How was your ride there, Charlotte? I've got a small patch here that will be dry in about two minutes. Yeah, probably so. Less than that, about 30 seconds, I reckon. <laughs> right, we're going to get some more re rides in down this end of the park. We'll do Invader again and also Griffin. We're filming lots of 4K POVs that will be coming up separately on the channel, too. Now, of course, Bush Gardens Tampa Bay is known for all of its different animals that they've got there. Yeah, there's not as many here at Bush Gardens Williamsburg. We have got quite a large bird selection just here. Look at this beautiful eagle. So welcome to the Irish themed area of Busch Gardens Williamsburg. I was just wanting to say that all the theme music has now been switched over for pop music. I am sure this same thing happened four years ago as we got later in the day. And yeah, I'm not really a big fan of that. I mean, they've gone to so much effort to create all these beautiful themed areas and facades. And even like the newer things like Dark Coaster, really well themed. And yeah, they're just playing pop music around all the areas now. It does take away from the theme a little bit. So yeah, I'm not really too sure why they do it, um, but they do. And yeah, I'm sure that happened four years ago. Very weird, especially when he's been playing theme music all day. Lots of different shops and buildings, all beautifully themed in. And right here, we've got Finnegan's Flyer, s and Screaming Swing. So yeah, we'll give this a go and we'll take you on. Not done this one. Hey, here we go. Finnegan's Flyer, we've come on this side, so we should be over the water when we swing up high. Fingers crossed. Like I said, I've not done this one before. 
Are we going to see some water? Hey! I like that because it makes you feel even higher than you actually are. They've really thought about the location for Finnegan's. Whoa! That is good. Better than just looking down at tarmac. Here we go. It's going to feel really high. Oh, that breeze is so nice. Still no sign of this storm. Woo! What really makes it is just the fact it's a lap bar restraint as well. Oh, that was good, I enjoyed that. Woo. Turtle watch. <laughs> Just at our ride down Finnegan's flyer, that was fantastic over the water oh, there. That was so good. Like you don't feel like you're going so much higher than you are. Yeah, definitely. I wish the cycle was longer. Maybe a bit better theming on the supports at the side. Um, but still, it was good fun. That was, and I enjoyed the location. We're going to get some more re rides in now here at Bush Gardens Williamsburg. Well, we've just done even more re-rides here at Busch Gardens. It's 10 past eight, the sun's still shining, and yeah, the storm hasn't come in, which is great. And yeah, of course, we're coming towards the end of our day. And uh, yeah, we've just done so many rides, just lapping the coast is brilliant. I just thought we'd show you inside the Sesame Street area, Forest of Fun, because there's actually a little coaster just around here, a little zero force. So yeah, we'll take you on there now. It's over, bye. Here we go, on Grover's Alpine Express, we've got the whole ride to ourselves here. <laughs> Charlotte's in the front of the ERS tonight. But yeah, everyone was saying, even on the radio this morning driving here, the storm's coming in. Look at the weather. Shows how unpredictable it can be sometimes. Like, looks a bit cloudy over there, but no storm yet. Whee! Helix, Helix, Helix! <laughs> Woo! I like how it's all through the trees. Hey! Again, or is that it? I'm not too sure. That's it. One lap. Well, we had our ride over there on the family coaster in Sesame Street and made our way back over here to Pantheon. And yeah, just had three more rides on here. Fantastic. Look at the spike just there, all lit up with the purple lighting. And I tell you what, this coaster warms up so, so much. It really does, doesn't it? No, it really does. What great rides. Oh, and yeah, on that uh, Outer Bank oh, Airtime absolutely hill. fantastic. Yeah, much better than earlier on. I still think Titus is the better of the two. However, this is still a fantastic ride. It really is. Now, on a five-minute wait, you can't complain. Absolutely brilliant. Well, talk about perfect timing. We just actually went on Apollo's chariot for another re-ride to end our day here at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. And in the distance, we saw lightning. Yeah, it must have been quite a way away because we still going to hear the thunder. But yeah, there was lightning in the distance and there's a few droplets of rain starting. So we're going to make our way out of the park before, of course, absolutely throws it down. But it's held off for us all day, right up until the nine o'clock park close, which is fantastic. And there we go. That brings us to the end of our visits here to Busch Gardens Williamsburg. We have had an absolutely amazing action-packed day today, haven't we? It's been brilliant. We have done so many rides today. I was not expecting to get in anywhere near as much as we have done. We thought the park was going to be busy, you know, and it really wasn't. We've done so much and it's been absolutely fantastic. Of course, let's go through some of our highlights. Firstly, getting on Pantheon. Earlier on, it wasn't anything spectacular. It was still a good ride, um, but wasn't amazing. How it's running now, absolutely brilliant there. Oh, it was just running so fast. The airtime on there. That's just brilliant. Yeah, absolutely brilliant coaster and a brilliant addition to this park. And in terms of the theming, actually, I don't think it looks as bad now as some people were making out when it first opened. It has got some theming around it, uh, but a bit more landscaping would be nice. Of course, the new ride for this year, Dark Coaster. We love that. Oh, that was absolutely brilliant. What a great ride. Yeah, we really enjoyed that. We've had a couple of rides on there, which has been fantastic. A really nice addition to this park and something indoors for the weather does turn. And then along with that, we've gotten so many other fantastic rides, including my favourite coaster here, uh, Alpen guys, I, I love that. I completely agree, that was absolutely brilliant. Yeah, one of the best inverts out there, the tallest one, and yeah, absolutely brilliant ride. Along with that, some other fantastic coasters, Loch Ness Monster, Griffin, the list goes on. Apollo's Chariot was fantastic. Uh, in terms of operations here today, they've been pretty good. Um, there's been a couple of rides that closed.
close later on in the day. So if you are coming down, make sure you check the opening times um, at the ride entrances. Um, but you know what? It's been fantastic. They've got a great variety of rides. We've done three water rides here oh, today. Oh, indeed. It's one of those parks where they've got so many standouts. We did the transportation rides that they've got. The boat ride was great. The train, the cable car. I love this park. One of my favourite parks of the trip. I really like the Busch Gardens and SeaWorld parks. And yeah, they've got some amazing coasters here, but can mix in with the theming. I mean, this park is very immersive throughout the areas. It's so well themed. There's only one negative to that, and that is the, the audio that changed later on in the day. I don't know why they do it. I think they did it last time, but uh, it does take away a little bit from the themed areas, um, putting changing the audio. But you know what? We've had a fantastic day. The Bolton as well, uh, another oh, great ride. That was great. Took me by surprise. So many standouts, yeah, Charlotte. Yeah, really is. So many standouts at this park. I love Busch Gardens in Tampa, and this one's just as great, if not even better. Like, they're both amazing parks for their own reasons. We've had a brilliant day here. Thanks to the park for having us. So uh, we really do appreciate it. Loads of on-ride POVs, and what a fantastic theme park this really is. Uh, we've got two more theme park vlogs coming up, and we can't believe it, can we, Charlotte? I can't believe we're nearly at the end. We've got two Six Flags parks coming up, Six Flags America, and Six Flags Great Adventure. So stay tuned for them vlogs coming up, and check out the playlist here on Theme Park Worldwide, featuring all the vlogs from this trip. But from Busch Gardens, that leaves us with one final thing to say. Get out there and keep on riding. We'll see you in the next vlog.